CSS comments always start with a forward slash and a star, and they end with a forward, uh, star and a forward slash. And you can make them as many lines as you want. The next step is we're going to type theme name, and then colon, and then my template. If I hit save now, and I refresh this page, you'll see that my template is now appearing as the theme name. But the theme is still broken. It's broken because the template itself is still missing. Let's go through and figure out some more information that we want to include in this little block here. So there's the theme URI, which is the actual URL for our template. So I'm just going to put uh, my own domain. And if I had the template somewhere, then I would probably put my template. And you could download it there, but unfortunately it's not there. And then a description. Simple WordPress theme for killer sites. And a version, which is very important if you're going to be offering up your template to people online, and an author. I'm just going to save that there. If we refresh that again, the template is still missing. And what it's complaining about is that there's no index.php file. Now, the way that WordPress is structured is that you can create different pages for different styles of content. So let's go back just for a minute to our page here. What we're looking at here is the default home page. If I click on Hello World, then I'm taken to a particular post in the WordPress theme. Now, when I go back, if I click on About, I'm taken to an actual page in my WordPress configuration. And if I do a search, then I'm taken to a search results page. Now, if our theme doesn't have all of these different kinds of templates, it'll eventually just default to the index.php file. Now because our WordPress theme doesn't have an index.php file, it still says that it's broken. So let's make an index.php file. I'm going to go back to Text Wrangler, and I'm just going to create a new file. I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to just say index.php. Now there's nothing there, but if I go back here and I refresh it, we'll actually see that my template shows up and it's no longer broken. However, when I click on WordPress Classic, I can see what my theme is going to look like with the content. And when I go back to the Kubrick theme or the WordPress default theme, I can also see that. However, when I go back to my template, I don't see anything. The reason for this is that we haven't actually used any of the code that is available to us through the WordPress API. The WordPress API is basically a collection of functions that WordPress provides template designers so that we can basically build our own themes without having to worry about the nitty-gritty of the WordPress content management system. Basically, we can create themes without having to worry about accessing the database or manipulating posts so that they're hierarchical or any of these kinds of tasks that would be better spent or better done by the actual WordPress framework or WordPress installation. So if I go back to my index.php file and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start creating a very simple PHP page. First thing, of course, is you need to have a doc type. I'm just going to put that in. And I'm going to put in an HTML tag and a head tag. I'm going to close the head tag, a body tag. I'm going to close the body tag. And then I'm going to close the HTML tag. And just in here, I'm going to put hello world. Very simple so far. Now if I hit save and I go back to my template, you'll see that it says hello world. 
In fact, if I go to anywhere on my page or anywhere on my website, I'm going to see Hello World. There's no way for WordPress to figure out where it is right now. So I'm just going to close this, and we're going to add a little bit of logic so that we can figure out some things like the proper title of our page. I'm going to go back to Text Wrangler, and the first bit of WordPress code that I'm going to introduce is the blog name. So I'm just going to use the PHP block here, and I'm going to close the PHP block. So whatever you see inside here is actually PHP code. And in here, I'm just going to say blog info name. And now what this is going to do is it's going to output the name that I've specified in the settings of my blog. So I should get my new template in my new WordPress theme. And that's what we're getting. Again, very simple. So we're already starting to see a bit of dynamic content appearing. Now, there is another thing that I'd like to put in there, which are basically all of the little chunks of code that are made available thanks to the RSS and subscription services that WordPress offers. So I'm just going to actually paste this in from another theme, and I'll briefly touch on it right now. So in the head body, or in the head section of my HTML page, I'm just going to paste in three lines. The first is a link tag, alternate, application RSS plus XML. Title is equal to a blog info name. Now we've already talked about blog info name. That's the name of the actual blog. And then RSS feed, and then blog info RSS URL. Now if you guess that blog info RSS to URL is the RSS feed, then you're correct. So basically we're just adding some helpful information for the browser so that it knows how to subscribe, if this is in fact a blog, to this particular WordPress installation. And then we're also going to have this WP underscore head section, which is going to be used by WordPress if there's any kind of dynamic content that it wants to inject, and it does this in the WP underscore head section. So it's just good to leave this here. Now, I'm going to click on this again, and I'm going to activate, and you'll notice that we haven't actually changed anything. But if I visit the site, and I view my source, we're actually going to get a little bit more information than we saw in our template. We're going to get some meta information. We're going to get some more XML information. We're also going to have the generator, which in this case is WordPress. And so blog info, you are, blog info name has been replaced with my new template RSS feed. And then the RSS feed has also been dynamically created for us. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about the loop. And the loop is a concept that WordPress template designers tend to refer back to and is often seen in a lot of blog posts dealing with styling of WordPress themes.